Okay, so this is going to be the fifth and final video on this, I think. Um, last video we took care of the front wheel. Um, today we're going to do the brake cables. Um, I'll show you both why they need to be replaced and how to replace them. Um, we're also going to probably take a look at how to wrap the handlebars. I wasn't going to do that to this bike, um, but uh, it turns out that the uh, the pool noodle shit that is on the handlebars is um, degrading. So it will turn your hands black as you ride it, which is not great. Um, so I, I picked up some new bar tape, and um, I think I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but we'll start with the brake cables, um, and then it, I'm pretty tired of dealing with wheels. Um, the back wheel is is just as bad as the front one as far as how, how true it was. Um, however, it's trued up the same way, so I'm not going to cover how to do that. You've already seen like way more than enough of that. Um, uh, we may take a, a quick look to see how easy it is to service the axle without removing the freewheel. Um, <clears throat> the freewheel on, which is the, the set of gears on the rear wheel, um, requires an expensive special tool to remove. Um, you really need a vise and you need a special tool that's like 50 bucks off of eBay, um, which is I think the only place you can get it. It's for uh, Sax slash uh, Maillard, if that's how that's pronounced, freewheel, French design. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't really need to be taken off for normal service um, as long as we can get to the, uh, the wheel bearings. So with that, let's start on the brake cables. Okay, so we're going to start with the front brake cable. Um, you can see this is busted. And this is these are called Bowden cables, and the idea is uh, it lets the wire go around curves, and the length of the Bowden cable stays the same, um, no matter what curves it goes around, um, and that's what that's basically what the cable is held in line by, so that it can pull the brake. Now, because this is broken, when you crank down on the brake a lot of your effort is spent just just pulling this straight um, because this no longer is the same length all of the time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the cable um, and we're going to replace the housing and so we'll just loosen this off as far as it'll go and so this is slack now, and I'm just going to cut this because it'll be easier to finagle this once it's off the bike. So, should be able to get it just with some lineman's pliers. I also have some uh, di or, uh, diagonal cutters, and if worse comes to worse, we can do uh, shears, but that shouldn't be necessary. So that's cut, and we'll just pull this out. And this is the cable. So we're we're going to make another one that's that's this length, um, and then this will just slide out here. And this is this is called a road bike end. Um, there's there's two styles of of ends. The other style is like this, and this goes for upright handlebars like you'd find on mountain bikes. So this cable, excuse me, this this housing is what we're going to use. So this is a spiral wound uh, piece of metal um, with a plastic jacket over the top of it. So it needs to be cut with 
a hacksaw or a dremel um, something like that and then once we've cut it we'll kind of make sure the ends are as clean as we can get them make sure the uh, the the inner diameter is open so that the cable will pass freely and then we'll uh, put the new one in so I'm gonna get set up to uh, cut this to length and bring you right back okay so I haven't actually cut this yet but I want to show you how I'm gonna route it so the old one went kinda this away which is not great what I'm going to do is uh, stick this in here and I'm going to go behind the handlebar on the right side and bring it in so it's about like that um, it doesn't need to be wild and crazy as far as height uh, my goal is to have it so as this rests um, there's not a whole lot of side load on this like the the housing is as straight as it can be going in here um, and the same for the bracket down here um, without making it ridiculously tall so anything like that should do it so I'm gonna mark this off and um, I'll show you how I cut it okay so I've just put this in a little vise. It's not really clamped tight. It's just like sitting here. Um, you don't have to have a vise. Um, I'm just using this to make it hold still a little bit better. I just marked it with this uh, what's it. And we'll just saw through it like this. That's kind of a dog's dinner, but uh, I'm going to use a flat file and file this a little bit flatter. bit to stick in the end here and just kind of ream this out just a little bit just to make sure it's okay um, and then then we're gonna find out where I put down the cable ends and slip those on oh and I also have to grab the road brake cables because I only brought the mountain bike ones out here so We'll come right back for that. So I was looking at this stuff, and I'm pretty sure this is shift cable. It's too thin, and uh, these ends are not quite big enough. I happen to have this is a this is one that sunlight will sell you, which is uh, uh, you can see the end on that is different to this one. And this end definitely fits, and this one is pretty loose. Like I said, that, that wire is really thin too, so I think this is shift cable. Um, the sunlight ones have an extra end on them, and both the mountain, mountain bike and the uh, road brake uh, ends on them. So you can just cut off the, the ones that you want to use, or don't want to use. So I'm going to cut this off on this side and we'll just reuse this and um, I'll just use the cable that I've already cut or the housing that I've already cut um, and then I'll have to get back to the store and deal with that so I guess we're just going to do the front brake today um, but that's the important one anyhow 
So, cut that, pull this out. And then uh, I'm not sure actually if if we're going to need the cable ends for this side or not. Um, but we're going to find out together. Um, but once this is cut, you just kind of gently wiggle it around to get it started. And then it'll go straight through, just like that. It's a it's a wise idea to get the stainless cable. The cable that it came with was just uh, whatever it was. And um, those rust and bind up. The stainless ones will last a lot longer. Probably for the life of the bike, I would imagine. Unless you're really wailing on it. So let's bring this back around to the bike and um, put it on. Alright. So now that we're back at the bike... Uh, you should be aware that um, depending on the type of brake that you have, if you have the side pull rather than the center pull, um, you will probably have this other style of brake lever. You can see it's got a big old hole on the top. Um, that sunlight cable comes with an adapter that slots right in there. And then that's also big enough to take a cable end. So that's what you would do with this type. Now with this guy, um, this is too small to accept a cable end, and the old cable didn't have one, and that's fine. Um, so we'll just stick the bare housing in there. Um, and then down here, which again would be down on the caliper if you had a single pivot, this will take a, pivot, a cable end. So we'll put one on the, uh, the brake end, but not, not one on the lever end. And the way to do that... So we've got our, got our housing and, and cable here. We'll just gently tease this on. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit so you don't uh, catch any of the individual wires in this cable. But it'll go on pretty easy. And then this also hides all of your all of your sins as far as how you cut the cable. And you just kind of wiggle this round and gently tease it on and it'll slot on decently tight. Um, it can be crimped, it does not need to be crimped and I'm not going to crimp it. So from here, I'm going to take this wire completely out again, because I messed up, forgot what I was doing. This is going to go right up through the brake here. Like that. I, f I feel a mighty need to grease that. Come on. There we go. And then this will pull all the way through. And out, because I did it wrong again, because it goes through here first.
Oh, you son of a bitch. After all that. Okay. I think I am going to grease that. This is all aluminum so it's not going to rust. But it'll feel a lot nicer if it's greased. You don't need to grease the cable. You really don't need to grease any part of this. This is just my uh, <clears throat> retentiveness. But anyway, we've got that in. So we'll feed the housing through again. Open this up a little bit more too. Route this just like I said. I'll tighten this down too. Or get it started at least. Oh, that's buttery smooth. Feed it through here. Slot that in there. And that's how that's going to go. So, it's straighter over here. It's still reasonably straight over here. And um, so that will be pretty good. Now, as far as this guy goes, I believe the last time the brakes were serviced on this, this was put in backwards, because if this, if this cable was on the other side, then you would actually be able to unhook it without it being like a huge fight. So I'm going to take this out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it back through the other way. Like so. And that way it'll be a lot less obnoxious to hook up because we can hook it like that. And then we'll just pull this down through the back. So 
that wiggles through just like that. And just like we set up the brakes the first time. They're going to go in about there. Um, maybe a little bit tighter. Maybe up there. Actually, tighter yet. Like that. Yeah, I'm liking this better already. Come on. Now we already know this thing is in the ballpark. This is pretty close as it is actually. And so we'll trim off the excess just enough. We'll trim it like maybe to there. And after this is cut, you can uh, put a bit of heat shrink over this, or some, uh, they make crimp on ends, or you can put some uh, uh, candle wax over it or something just to keep this from splaying out. Uh, it doesn't have to be like that. The shift cables on this are not like that, and so they're just, just splayed out all over the place just waiting to stab somebody. Um, but we've got this installed. I can already tell you just how it is. Like that, that is tighter. And if we run this in a little bit more, that's gonna stop on a dime. Um, one thing to be aware of with these, with these cheater things that Schwinn put on, you cannot break as hard on these as you can on the drops. This will bottom out before this does. Um, however, I really don't think that's going to matter. I think we're pretty good. I don't think that's going to bind. And that's tight. So I'm going to go take this for a quick spin and we'll see how we did.
So, I would say that is a solid result. Um, if you can brake hard enough with the front wheel to lift the back tire, even when you're braced against it, um, then you're stopping as hard as this thing will stop. Stop any harder that you, you'll end up on your face. So, that's good. That also demonstrates why the front brake is the main brake. Because if you're braking as hard as you can on the front brake, which is as hard as you can stop, um, then the back wheel is in the air. It contributes nothing. That's a, you know, obviously for this type of bike. If you have a, a bike that's got a bunch of junk in the trunk, your weight distribution will change, and um, so the the braking strategy might change a little bit too. But for just a regular push bike, uh, that is how it is, my friend. Um, so what we have left to do is the rear brake. I'm not going to play with this today um, because I don't have a cable for it, at least not one that I can trust. But I will show you this. Um, you've got two cables. You've got this cable up here, which goes down and slots into, the, into a uh, special grommet in the frame with a special cable end, which is not attached, so you can reuse it. There's a matching one right here, um, and then another six inch piece of, uh, of housing right here, and then it goes down into the brake, same as the, uh, same as the front setup. So replacing the back is exactly the same, you just got, got to cut two pieces of these instead of one. Um, even if I did have the cable, it wouldn't really be worth doing that right now anyway, because the back tire needs to be trued. Um, so that's fine. Um, however, since we're to that point, I think I'm going to pull off the, the back wheel and we'll take a look and see how easy it is to get to the rear bearings. Um, and because that's going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> and um, if we can get to the rear bearings, we'll service those. Um, I'll true up that tire or that wheel off camera. Um, so that won't take very long in video time, and um, then we'll uh, we'll screw around with this pool noodle shit, which has already turned my hands black just from riding it out onto the street and back. So before we get too much further, I wanted to show you the money um, because. I don't want you to think that this is like some bullshit hipster exercise um, putting one of these back on the road. So we started out with the bike for $20 and then I bought some tires for it which were $24.95 each from Motor City Bicycle. Then I bought a couple feet of brake housing for $5.98. This shows uh, mountain bike cables, but obviously we got road brake cables, but those were $7.98 for both. I got uh, four rim strips two for this bike and two for another one. Five dollars total, so it was only two fifty for this bike. I got two sets of Jaguar uh, threaded post brake pads for seven ninety eight total. I also got a couple of tubes, which I don't have the receipt for, but I'm going to say they were eight bucks a piece. And what else are we missing? the uh, uh, tape that we're going to do for the handlebars, 19 bucks. So we add all this up, so we got the, the bike, the tires, the uh, brake housing, the brake cables, the brake pads, the, uh, what are we missing? 
I guess that was the the brake cables. Uh, the rim tape and the uh, tubes and the handlebar tape. So we will add all of that stuff up. Now I bought I paid cash for the bike from a, a dude so I didn't pay sales tax for that. I only paid sales tax for this. So total cost one thirty five ninety and some some hours spent playing with it. And of course uh, that's not counting tools or shop materials. But um, you would be hard pressed to spend more than a hundred bucks on what I've shown you. Um, and so if you did, you're at two thirty five ninety for a bike that was built like a five hundred dollar bike, you know, at accounting for inflation. Obviously it's not as light as a modern bike. Um, but it's built every bit as solidly as a modern bike, if not more so. It is far more solid than an equivalent $250 bike that you could get new. Um, and other than some sweat equity and this expenditure, um, this results in a bike that you can ride for thousands and thousands of miles. Um, and that is why this is worth doing. Um, I... I like the Schwins. I like how how solidly they're built, um, but it's also a good economic proposition. You know, I bought my first Schwinn because I was making twelve thousand dollars a year in two thousand five, uh, and I was also making twelve thousand dollars a year in two thousand eight when everything cratered and gas was four dollars a gallon and I couldn't get to work. I already couldn't afford insurance or registration but I bought a thirty dollar Schwinn and put some tires on it and rode it for an entire season and it was a huge savings you know uh, at a time when I could barely afford rent or food individually I was able to occasionally afford both. And that's what makes this worthwhile. And I, I wanted to be clear that doing this is, uh, is a way that you can save yourself. You know, this could keep a roof over your head. It's not just that it's a cool bike. It's a cool bike that will get you where you need to go. And it's, it is not hipster bullshit. So having said that, I guess we should get back to it. Finish it up. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, see if we can make a cleaner cut on this brake housing. Um, I've never uh, in my life been anywhere where uh, there was not the presence of a Dremel somewhere in somebody's hands. Uh, a lot of people seem to have them, nobody seems to use them, and that's principally because they're worthless. Um, and uh, it just seems like they should be uh, better than they are. Uh, so anyway, in the spirit of making sure that it was as worthless as possible, some time ago for a project, a different project, I ended up with this one, which is an unspeakably shitty Dremel knockoff from Menards. Uh, but anyway, it came with this this uh, cutoff wheel, and this one didn't immediately break, so I'm going to try cutting this and see if it does any better than uh, gnawing at it with a hacksaw. <laughs> We'll turn it this way so that if this disc, if and when this disc explodes, it's not going to hit me or the camera. And we'll just try nibbling at it.
And that's it for the cutoff blade. So I'm going to say, don't bother with the Dremel, just use the hacksaw. Okay, back over here on the bike, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the front. The tension is mostly off this one, so I'm going to I'm going to cut it. Um, you really don't want to cut these when they're when they're uh, tightened up. It's bad form to, pre to uh, cut any sort of wire if there's tension on it. Not that this would kill you or anything, but um, uh, you just don't want to. What if it springs? What if it catches you in the face? It'd be terrible. So, um, I'm pretty happy with the length of this. I wouldn't mind if it was a smidge longer, but it's pretty close. So we'll chop this. And then... This is the grommet piece I was telling you about a while ago. Um, there's one up front and one back here. You can see you just need one cable end for up here. This side just uses uses uh, this guy, and that's all it needs. So I'm going to chop a piece this length. And then on the front... Um, I don't really feel like moving the camera. But when you cut a piece for the front, you just want to make sure that you leave enough slack that when the, uh, when the wheels are turned 90 degrees either direction, you've got enough slack in the housing. So, that's our front piece. I'm happy with how long this one is too. You can see on this particular one, we don't actually need a cable end on either side because one's going into the into the adjuster barrel that that is the correct size for this cable and the other side is is going into this other grommet. So yeah. I'll uh, I'll do the the cutting off camera. And uh here up front. Yeah, I'll deal with that later, but yeah, I'll just uh, bring you back in a second. All right, so I got that, that wire, or the housing cut up. So, I also greased this through and I, I think this lever got hit in fact I can pretty much guarantee it and so it's going to need a little bit of persuasion to uh, take that cable again just to pop it through the slot that it's got to go through Along. Start with the adjuster barrel.
then we'll take our long piece. I'm gonna get the grease off my hands real quick. The inside of this cable has a plastic sheath, which is why it doesn't need to be lubricated. That's not the right piece. This is the right piece. First grommet. Tuck that onto the end here. Then we'll get our second grommet and our smaller piece. Just like that. That's going to go this away. And then we've got a cable end for this side. Like that. So, slot this in here. Just like that. Slot this in here like that. Tuck our cable through. Try not to kink the cable as, as you're routing it. But uh, that's good. We'll pull this snug. And that should be alright. This could stand to be a little bit longer, but it's not a big deal. If you make it too high, it would interfere with the seat anyway, if the seat had to be any lower. Slot the slot the wire through our our what's it here. Just like that. And I'm gonna snug this down very lightly because uh, I still have to address the rear wheel, so I don't really want to finish setting up the brake yet. I just wanted wanted to uh, get it together. So we'll just do it up tight enough that it's not going to fall off and we'll finish setting it up after the rear wheel is true. Um, but uh, adjusting it is just the same as what we did in the front. So I will spare you that and um, I'll, I'll show you what state the rear wheel is in and why we got to address that. So even with the washers staggered on this on this back brake, it still wasn't centered right. There's almost no dish on this side, and uh, more importantly, if I spin this, you can probably see just how wobbly that wheel is. And so what I'm going to do is uh, to address the, the bearing first. I'm going to loosen off this nut um, all the way so that I can get a wrench in here and uh, loosen off the, uh, the lock nut on the inside here. We're not going to be able to get to, the, to all the hardware on the freewheel side without taking off the freewheel. As previously mentioned, we're not going to take off the freewheel but we will 
try and get the axle out um, very gingerly degrease it on this side and uh, repack it on both sides and adjust it um, so that we can properly true the wheel I'm not going to show you the, the wheel truing process you already saw that um, but uh, this axle is going to be a little bit different also when we're in there uh, we can pull the axle entirely and make sure that it's not bent these uh, not not on this bike but especially on modern cheap bikes the the rear axles are seriously underrated for us uh, North American fat asses and so uh, they tend to bend really easily um, even with someone who's even with someone of regular weight um, so anyway enough of that okay so again we got a 15 on the outside I'll just remove this so we get a little bit of wiggle that should give us space to put this is probably another 16 so That's already loose. So I guess we'll just pop the wheel off entirely. Watch your knuckles when you're loosening this off that you don't uh, crash into stuff. still be in focus. So on this side we've got another lock nut, there's a spacer, and then the rest of the junk is down in here a ways. There's a, uh, there's a spline on the inside of this that lets you unthread this whole thing. It's just got a big old screw thread that goes right onto the hub. Um, but as mentioned it's expensive. And this one says Schwinn approved France model F3. Not that it matters. And we know it's it spins fine, it grabs fine, so the freewheel doesn't need any service anyway at the moment. So yeah. Because this side is loose. Yeah, almost. Because this one doesn't have a uh, quick release thing. You can use a, an ancient Indian trick and just thread thread the other nut on here, tighten them up against each other, and uh, 
that'll give you something to grab onto that's not going to slip so we can unthread this the rest of the way. So, I'll just tighten these up like so. Grab onto the inner nut on, on that side and then I can keep cranking over here. Oh jeez. I'm gonna need another another uh, wrench here to get this the rest of the way off. Um, this is similar to the way the front wheel is in that you've got a, uh, a cone right here and you've got a lock nut right here and uh, unlike the front one um, there is no no turn washer so these happen to be coming off together um, that seems to just be kind of how those go um, I don't I think they're supposed to be tightened up against each other a little bit tighter so that the axle stays in adjustment but uh, that's just how it is so i'm going to pause real quick and make sure i don't lose any of these these bearings and um, get a wrench to uh, get this the rest of the way off so this is our guy looks pretty straight to me. This is an interesting grease nodule upon it. Um, but yeah, uh, just like the front wheel, um, this uh, also this has been greased at some point in its life, so that, that's a good sign. Um, just like the front wheel, it's got loose, loose balls in it. I'm not going to film um, doing all of that because you've already seen it, but you can at least see what this what this back uh, axle looks like. You can see it's pretty beefy also. So I'm going to uh, clean the, the, the uh, uh, crap out of the races. I'm going to degrease this and regrease this and uh, put it back together. Um, once I've got that back together, I'm going to pull the uh, tire off and and uh, straighten all that shit out and um, yeah then we'll set up the brake okay so I cleaned this up real quick it's actually kind of neat you probably can't see it in this light it's barely visible in person but it's got a little feather on it and it says feather Japan so it's ever so lightweight I guess I mean it's just steel but whatever I did notice as I was as I was uh, laying hands upon this that uh, this cone was not tightened off against this spacer so it doesn't need to be tight but I'll just use that that uh, wire stripper trick again and um, snug it down a little bit so it so that it doesn't wander at least by hand yeah that's better all right so off to the brake cleaner incidentally um there's a there's a pit on there's a pit right here that I can feel with my fingernail. And the rest of it seems okay. Again, that's I mean you can you can run that to failure if you want. Um, but this this will be good enough for our purposes and and for many miles to come. So I realized that um, there were a couple of things I wanted to like blather on about, so I figure I'll do that while I'm picking the balls out of this out of this hub. Incidentally, um, if if this 
is bent, but the wheel is true, you'll be able to tell because as you spin the wheel, the free wheel will just wibble like that. Because the wheel might be true, but it's against a crooked hub because the because the uh, axle is bent. So if you see something weird like that happening, it's a it's a bent axle and a true wheel. Of course, it could all be out of whack too. The other thing I wanted to address uh, was um, when you're truing up a wheel. One of the things you can do to check to see how balanced it is as far as spoke tension is just to uh, just to twang them. Because, you know, this is just 36 uh, guitar strings, really. And you can tell they'll, they'll have uh, one note to them, or they'll have a, a couple of notes, one for each side. You can hear how that that doesn't have a note at all. That's because this is completely loose. So I will check to make sure this one isn't broken, but uh, before I even start truing the wheel, anything that's super loose, I will tighten up until it makes a note that's similar to what's, what's uh, on the rest of these. Also, as I was picking this apart, I noticed that this side is actually missing a bearing. And uh, it, it made me realize I didn't actually discuss why I'm just repacking these instead of replacing the bearings, but also telling you you can replace the bearings. Um, it's more important that the stuff be clean and greased than it, for it to be 100% as far as wear. And so even though there's pitting on, this, on these cones, um, I'm just going to run with it because if it's cl if it's clean and and greased, then that's like three quarters of the battle. If you've got sand and and garbage in here and no grease in it, well then then you'll just destroy these at a much faster rate. Um, worn is okay, worn out is less okay. And what's even less okay is uh, whatever dipstick had this part last who lost a, lost a bearing, and it wasn't me, because I, I checked the whole floor around where I took this part, and nothing fell off. But, uh, so it is. And in the spirit of, of uh, running as, as purchased, that is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go chasing out this evening to buy another bearing because we're one short. Um, and, and that brings me to the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, which is that uh, you, may, you may have watched these videos. I mean, uh, we'll, just, we'll just go with the delusion that anybody is watching these videos, but you may have watched these videos and wondered, like, why is he doing this right now? Like, why wouldn't it have made more sense to do this service when we did the tires so that, you know, don't have to take the tire off twice and can just, uh, just, um, <clears throat> have it all apart once and true up the wheels and do all of that all at once. And uh, that is not an oversight on my part. Uh, the way I've structured these videos is very specifically to show you um, that you can do a little bit of service here and there and gradually make the bike better. The idea is if you bought, if you yourself had purchased this very bike and um, on day one had done what I did and bought rim tape tubes and tires and installed those um, then you could ride to work on day two on day two if you felt like it um, you could start in on the drivetrain 
and you could work out the uh, the state of the drivetrain. You could adjust the derailers because maybe you got a hill and you got to climb it and it's not shifting very well. Um, and you can do that in an evening, and you can ride it to work the next day. Um, the goal, my goal, in in the, the way I presented the the uh, repairs that we've done in this video, the series of videos, is that you could complete, you could pick a repair, you could perform the repair, and complete the repair, and at no point would you be in a position where you couldn't write it to work the next day. You know, I want it to be able to be back together and back in service, and then uh, as, you know, as, as you do a little bit of repair here and there, um, if you're getting the, the bike closer and closer to properly set up, and then once it is properly set up, you don't have to do the service all the time. You know, a bunch of this is once yearly or, or once every couple of years, depending on the uh, climate that you're riding in. And you can uh, devote your energy to living your life. And this will just be a reliable vehicle for you. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I was going after. And um, so it does necessarily involve a little bit of duplication of work. Um, but it will always leave your bike at the end of the night in a rideable state, or at least in a state where you can, like, put it back together how it was, um, and get yourself to work. Alright. So, that's all the balls out of both sides. And uh, we'll know which one is which, because one of these is missing a bearing. Um, you may be able to see how the freewheel turns around these splines. If you had the proper tool, you could jam it into the splines here and uh, put it in a vise or a, uh, use an impact wrench or something and wrench this whole thing off. Once this comes off, um, these aren't really great to take apart to service. It is possible to do so. Um, and then you can also take off the, the pipe plate and clean it if you want. Uh, this is here for a reason. Um, I know it was trendy to pull these off because they, they were considered unsightly. But it is much more unsightly to overshoot this lowest gear and get the chain tangled up in the spokes and maybe eat the spokes, and definitely eat some pavement. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's enough of that. I'm, I'm just going to uh, clean up these ball bearings, clean up these races, and uh, we'll, we'll set this back up as, as best we can with what, with what we've got. Um, I am going to run with the, the missing bearing. Uh, that's just gonna, how it's going to be for right now. But uh, the next regular service, obviously... Uh, probably a new set of bearings on both sides would be in order, and possibly a new set of, of cones um, if those are available. I thought of something else. Um, I probably already said this. Uh, don't give yourself the notion that you should uh, go crazy cleaning all this stuff up. Um, especially like down in here. I wiped this clean. I spritzed a tiny bit of brake cleaner all the way down into the race and cleaned it out with a paper towel. Um, but if you get brake cleaner into the moving parts of the freewheel, you will immediately be sad. So in this case, see I'm leaving it tilted. I'm going to spritz just a tiny bit in here. and then wipe it out. So not sure if it if it's picking up, but all throughout this process there's just little 
little red flecks all over my hands, kind of looks like I'm bleeding. A couple of times I've looked down and been like, man, what did I cut myself on? But it's just the uh, rattle can paint flaking off here and there and sticking to everything. So, uh, the, the inner part of this, the, uh, the cups on these, actually seem like they're probably okay. They're not as worn as the cones, anyhow. Um, and uh, with the uh, the principle of of uh, we're doing this to ride to work tomorrow, um, I'm not I'm not going to go chasing out for more ball bearings. Um, we're going to put it back together as it is, and at the next regular service, which is probably when it needs to be trued again, that's when you would pick the axle back apart and do whatever you got to do to it. You know, it's it's really not the end of the world if uh, if the bearings are a little bad. You know, they give you plenty of warning, and um, you know, it's not like on a car and on on a car where like a bad wheel bearing might mean that you'll uh, end up on the side of the road somewhere with with uh, the uh, like the entire hub still attached to the wheel. Sitting at an interesting angle on the ground. So, this is about ready to be repacked and put back together. My balls are shiny. And um, I'm not going to show that, and I'm not going to show the truing except to show like start and finish so you can kind of see where that's at. And, um, yeah. Alright, so it's a couple days later, and uh, I was starting to work on this back wheel in, in earnest. Um, I had dropped and lost one of the ball bearings in here, so even though I said I wasn't going to buy more ball bearings, um, the fact that I was now two short instead of one short was like, all right, well, you know, I know when to call it. And uh, just so you can see, if you can see, a set of 18 quarter inch loose ball bearings, which is what this takes, nine per side, is uh, 286 plus tax, or 286 with tax, I should say. And I thought that was going to be the end of my expenditure. Actually, I thought it was going to be the end of my expenditure when I showed you my receipts last time. But I started truing this up, and one of the spokes broke. So, um, that's actually, like, it is super annoying, but it's worth mentioning. Um, I wasn't, wasn't going to address spoke replacement, but it's not actually that big of a deal. So, if, with one caveat. Um... And that caveat is, on the rear wheel, if a spoke breaks on the far side here, on the right side, um, then the free wheel has to come off. The free wheel has to come off, it's either buy expensive tool time, or take it to a bike shop time. And that's uh, possibly the only time that you would have to have a, uh, a bike shop do the service on this. Even then, if you felt like doing it yourself, and you had another way home, you could take the wheel and have the shop pull the free wheel off for you, and, you know, buy a spoke from them for their trouble, and, um, then replace it yourself. Now, uh, all these spokes are suspect, you know, we're, I would not expect to replace just one spoke. Um, but probably won't have to do the whole wheel. Now, spokes come in a variety of lengths. I happen to have some spares, and they happen to be the incorrect size. But I can show you a new spoke is just like that. They come in different lengths and thicknesses. The thickness is not really a big deal 
for our purposes, but the length is. And uh, where did I put it? So the, the nipple has a bit of spoke left in it. It sheared right off at the uh, at the interface there. But it's about it's about two thirds of the way through. And if you look at the length of this, as opposed to the length of this spoke that I have, you can see it's probably about an inch longer, uh, 10 or 20 millimeters. Um, so the, the way these are laced up, this spoke goes over this spoke, it goes over this spoke, and it goes under this spoke and that's how it laces up. Now we can kind of unthread it, tilt it this way, and see if we can tease it out. It may it may be that the uh, that the freewheel's got to come off even to do this side. But might be able to coax it out anyway, even if we can't get the new one in. If a spoke breaks on you on the road, um, it's not the end of the world. It's going to be wobbly, and you can uh, uh, loosen off the, the brake on that side so that you can keep going without it dragging. So. This is scrap. We'll just uh, get the length off of it for reals. More or less. Yeah. That's at least 10. These typically come in um, lengths of, like, increments of 10 millimeters. So we would get probably a couple new spokes. Um, I'll probably try and wrestle the freewheel off just to make it easier. And um, replace this spoke. But uh, as I go around and true this wheel, which is not going to be today, uh, may not be this weekend. I haven't decided how, how excited I'm feeling about all that. Um, you know, more more spokes may let go because none of these have been touched other than the two that I tried to tighten and one of those two broke so but it's not the end of the world it's it it is annoying um, but it it's not going to uh, keep you from getting home or getting to work if you got to write on it like this for for a day or two um, so yeah I'm going to get some spokes, I'm going to get the freewheel off probably, maybe, I haven't decided. Seems like that would be a pain in the ass trying to thread that through though, without taking that freewheel off. So, uh, it's worth mentioning, you know, you could certainly run into it, I just ran into it, so that's a thing. It's not an expensive thing, it's just an annoying thing. Hey, so what has taken a single frame cut has actually taken like a month. Um, but what I was waiting for was I decided because I, I work on these on the regular, I was going to get the freewheel removal tool. Um, this is, there's only one source for this, it's on eBay. Uh, I forget what his name was or where he was from. It's, he said it was from Greece, but it was not actually from Greece. But anyway, it doesn't matter. One global source for these, as far as I can tell. Um, and the way these work is you just pop them on here. And rotate counterclockwise, and this whole cassette will screw off. You can use the, the uh, giant crescent wrench on this. I happen to have a breaker bar and a, and a correctly sized socket. And I've already broken this one loose, um, 
but uh, I was expecting, because I've had to, like, hammer on these with impact wrenches and stuff to get them off. Um, but that is not the case with this one, fortunately. Um, but yeah, you just grab onto that like this and rotate like so. And you just keep spinning it. And the whole thing comes off like that. And then the pie plate just lifts right off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all this off camera because I, I really don't feel like, I feel like uh, dragging this out any longer. But uh, I'm going to uh, just buy a, a whole new set of spokes. They're like 20, 30 bucks. I'm, I'm just not going to dick around with this anymore. Uh, I, I might as well do it right because I'd kind of like to pass this bike along um, and so the there's not really anything for me to show about wheel building that you can't see on other videos about wheel building from people who are uh, more experienced at it than I am um, don't let don't let the other videos um, uh, hoity-toity nature scare you off of it. It's really not that big of a deal. I've, I've built a few wheels and they're pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a bunch of, you're just basically sewing it together. Um, the, the one thing is if you happen to decide to re-spoke an entire wheel, make sure you take all the tension off the spokes. Don't just, don't just cut them because they're under pressure and you don't want to cause any, any, uh, you don't want to bend the, the rim or anything or cause any damage to the hub. So just, you know, go all the way around, take a, take like a turn of, of tension off at a time. And it's like, these are all loose now. So I'm just going to unscrew all the nipples and then clean up the hub while it's out and clean up the rim while the spokes aren't in the way. I'll order some spokes, rebuild this wheel. Um, and then the only thing left to do on the, on the, on the bike itself is to wrap the handlebars. And that'll do it. But that's going to be another video. This has uh, been far too long already. And so that is it for now. Broken spoke. 35 good spokes. 35 spoke nipples. Hub. Rim. Pie plate. Freewheel. Freewheel removal tool. We'll catch you on the flip side.